In this video, I'm going to show how the new Kinogram mode works. It's pretty much the same as the older video, as the previous one that I uploaded, but there are a few differences, so I want to go over them. So first of all, how to enter and exit this mode. Once we have the event, the performance that we want to turn into a Kinogram, we have set that selection and we have in our options, preferences, under playback and memory, you want to have enough cache memory here so that the entire selection is cached into memory. Once we have that and we're in this fluid uh, playback mode, if you go to video menu, you have the kinogram entry. And this, this is the default with all of the default settings, we're going to change this later, but right now I just want to show how to enter and exit. So if we go back to video, you can re-click on that kinogram or click on analysis and it's going back to the original mode. And if you right click inside this window, you have the exit kinogram menu. So the first thing we want to do here is we go right click and configuration in here we have a few very fundamental properties of the kinogram so the table how many rows and columns we have in the kinogram this is going to update in real time and we have so i'm going to live this to six by three that should be good for this and the crop size, which is going to be the size of each tile, of all of the tiles. And in this case, this needs to be adjusted based on how close we're filming. So in this case, we don't see really uh, anything. So I'm going to move out of this, go back to my first tile, and I'm going to center this as best as I can and release. As you can see, everything changed, but we're going to look into this later. But now we have this approximately centered athlete in the in this tile. Now we go back to configuration to change the crop size. We know that we don't have enough space here, so I'm going to increase this to maybe twice. And in terms of height, maybe 800 pixels as well. I can do apply here, I don't have to exit this window. I can do apply, and then I can figure out if I left enough room for this. Looks good, so I okay. And now I can start playing with this. So I replace the first one. And I, so as you can see, all of the other tiles have moved automatically. So what you wanna do is you take the last one and you frame it, and then they're all going to adjust automatically. So as we can see here, for example, this one is cut, so I'm going to take this one and center it, and now they are better. Here there is a change, there is a change in speed basically, so this is going to be another tile that we're moving. And I want to show you when you move this one, it's going to affect the the ones that I haven't touched yet, the ones that are still dynamic. The ones that I've moved manually are going to be fixed. So this means that since I fixed this one, I'm fixing this one and I've already set this one, it's going to move all of the other intermediate tiles. Now let's set this one here and okay this one needs moving now as you can see when i move this one it doesn't change anything else because we've already established the position for this one and this one and that's pretty much it if you want to reset all of the tiles there is an action that you can use reset all of the tiles reset this tile is going to just reset the position of the one tile that you've right clicked on and this we're going to see later. The other options that we have 
here are the right to left. So this would be when the athlete is progressing right to left into the video. So in this case, we would have this view as the first one and the last one would be here. Then the show border is just this little visual cue here. Um, and then auto interpolate is that thing where it calculates the position of the other tiles based on the ones that you've placed manually. Now labels is going to create little labels in each of the image. And so there are two modes, the clock or the frame number. The clock is going to be based on the general video clock, which means that if we, let me exit this mode. Let me go find the takeoff. Let's, let's place it here. And from here, I right click, mark the current time as the time origin. So now every time in the program is going to be relative to this point. So if I go back into my kinogram, as you can see, this frame is now marked as zero time and the others are progressing in the positive or in the negative for the run up to that key point, which is our zero time. The other mode is the frame number. So this is just going to progress linearly with each tile. And that's it. The other thing that is interesting is, for example, if you have this label, you can move it. So you can move it independently, individually, if it's maybe if sometimes you have a label that is that is obstructing an interesting part of the frame. And you can also move them all at once if you don't want to have them in the top left corner. In this case, you hold shift and then they can all be moved this way. And that's it for me. You can uh, go to save annotations. This is saved as part of the KVA file. So you do want to save this as part of your annotations so that when you come back to this video, it's going to load and you will still have this kinogram ready if you need to modify it or make some changes or export it again. Save image is going to save that kinogram as an image and you can change the size here and save it. And that's it for me. Hope you liked that video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next time.